show, Nugget. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Good, man. All right. This picture here, this was taken at a good friend Hammer's gym. I remember because this was my second time meeting you. The first time seeing you was actually at Size uh, William Street gym when he had you down and you were doing uh, privates and doing seminar. And I had to jump in myself to do a pad session with you. And then I jumped into the seminar too. I loved it. I learned a lot. So when this time came around. Yeah, I, re- I remember that seminar. I think, I think Claire For- Foreman was there. Yes. And yeah, it was, it was, yeah, different, different people I, that I hadn't met in Melbourne before. I think that was one of your first seminars in Melbourne too, after your initial one with Hammer. But yeah, I, I remember talking to you about the scene and then you said it was new for you to see all the new faces or the new up and comers coming up. Yeah. So when this seminar came along, I had to come down and also offered to take some photos of you because it was a great experience. I wanted to get more out of it and I'll learn a lot every time you come down for privates or seminars. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I, think, I think Hammer's was the first seminar I'd done from in Melbourne from being out of Australia. Yeah. I did a, I did a few with Phil Bennett in country New South Wales, but, but hammers was the first in the big city, I think. Yep. And anyone that's done a five round pad session with you know that knows that it's not <laughs> a walk in the park. It's an experience. You won't forget that, especially the first time doing it. Yeah. You, you have a way of reading people really quickly within the first minute. And at this particular seminar, you handpicked a few fighters after the seminar to do one round of pad each. And within the first few seconds, you read everyone. You knew the strength. You knew the weaknesses. Within a minute, you began catching them and hitting them back. The way you read people and read the fighters, it's always very fascinating. I'd like to hear more about how you analyze a fighter to find their strengths and weaknesses really quickly. Well, I, th- I think with all, with all the... A lot of people forget that I've probably been, I've been in martial arts since I was 13 years old. So I've been around punching and kicking a long time. And I'd say, I, I, back then, you'd, even in the karate classes, you'd hold part, pads and then your partner would hold pads. And I think from there, I think because I was so small and like I was just a kid, I... I I was training with men all the time. So if I, if I held the pad the wrong way or, or did something stupid with the pad, I'd end up paying for it and get, get a fair bit of punishment. You know what I mean? Especially some of these dudes, like 100 kilo guys, bouncers, doormen and that, like, like tough men. And they weren't really worried that I was tiny. They were just trying to hit me hard. Yeah. So I, I, th- I think the, the impact and, and force that I can take on the pads it didn't just happen overnight. I see some dudes on Instagram and that grab the pads and they're jumping around. <laughs> acting like, but man, you yeah. do it every day, every day for 30 years. And then people say, how come your body is so like, like, like thick and strong? Well, I, I get hit every day. I'm like a pretty much a walk and punch and back. Well, speaking of those people you see on Instagram, they might be just rehearsing that one section to do perfectly. But with you, what you see is what you get. That's what you've been doing for decades. Yeah, and I, th- I think I think also like you throw in a little bit of like my fight experience and that, and just just survival in general in a gym. People people forget like there's a whole there's a whole another culture and way of so when it comes to actually being a professional fighter and the the things you put your body through and the things you have to survive. Uh, you remember my friends uh, Philip Lyon, Dennis Kelly from the gym. They said that. Yeah, yeah, they, I do. Yeah, they said that when they did their first pad with you, you said something to them. You said that it was like you gave them a pad session, but then when it's time for you to play, you started to catch as well, and that's exactly yeah, what yeah. you did here. You let the fighter have their fun, and then once it's your turn to play, you start turning it on. You start hitting back. You start taping them. You start sweeping them every time. Yeah, I think I think just just. Just the way I hold pads, like some some people might. It, it's like anything in life. Some people are going to like it. Some people aren't going to like it. But anyone that's done pads with me, if they're not fit, they I don't know. They might say they don't like it. But most professional fighters like to do pads with me because you know whether you're fit, you know whether you're strong, and you pick up a few little tips along the way. Yeah. Do you remember what it was like? holding pads with Eric Miskell. This was a time when he was at the top of his game in the Victorian and Australian Muay Thai scene. And yeah, oh, I, was- remember, I remember Eric being very strong. He's quite fit. 
You know what I mean? He, and he does pads with Laos Tui and guys like that. Some guys you get, that they mightn't gel with you because of the pad style or whatever, or what the, the background they have. Yeah. But he comes from a pretty much a Thai boxing background. So, yeah, I, we gel pretty, we, we, we went all right. How do you bring out the best in a fighter, whether it be a beginner or a professional during a private pad session with you? I, I, I've never thought of that, but <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I just, I, you can tell if the, if the guy has had a few fights, he, he might want a little bit more rougher, a little bit more realer than where as a, if you get a beginner, your, your job as a coach or a trainer is to inspire them to want to do it again. So if you, yeah. if, yeah, I, I'm notorious for giving beat downs on the pads. But if I hold for a beginner, man, you, you find a beginner that I've beaten up. There's not because that's there's not no point. what a trainer should. That's it. Yeah, there's no one. There's no point. And two, like you're supposed to be making them want to do it. Like yes. they enjoy it. Yeah. And especially if you're getting money for it, they're, they're the customer. But exactly. for professional fighters, you, you're going to get a beat down. I've seen many of your Instagram trainers trying to train like professionals as they do to beginners. And I don't think there's much of a point in doing that. Yeah, it def definitely. If, if you run a gym and your pad holders are trying to beat everybody up, you probably, it's in this day and age, back in the day when I was a kid, when a young bloke fighting, yeah, of course, some people liked it. But yeah. in this day and age, you're just going to go to the next gym down the road. As a business side of it and a businessman, You'd be a moron, but as far as the the real Thai boxing and real anything, I, I I don't really talk about Thai boxing that much anymore either because I, I believe that fighting, you know, fight sport, it's 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 fighting. Whether you're doing boxing, Muay Thai, whether you're doing MMA, like it's it's running a big gym like this. I can't think just one dimensional and one one thing. I, I have to yeah, I have to have every every discipline and and. I have to understand each discipline. I, 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 we, I've been, been getting into the wrestling in that lately. So, <laughs> but it's, it's, so, That's nice, yeah, man. But, a lifelong martial artist. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember this fight here? Yeah, I remember. I remember that, that was Toby's first fight with the tall guy. Yes, Jakub. Watching a lot of your social media videos, I saw that you were brought into the pit to work with Toby and his fight team. What was it like working with the boys from the pit like Clint and Blair? Look, the pit's pretty much a second home for me when I come to Australia. Like, I, I, I love being back in Brisbane now, but it's probably, oh, I miss Perth for obviously reason. My girlfriend comes from Perth, Vicky, so like, but, but the, the actual pit itself, I, I miss just, just the atmosphere there and training and working with Blair and Clint every day. Yeah. They're always, they're, they're pretty funny dudes. What was it like at this particular moment? This was Toby's first fight with the last minute replacement, uh, Jakub on Rebellion Muay Thai. What's it like being in this ch in a change room at this particular fight as a main event? To me, it's just another fight. I, th I know to Toby and Blair would have just been just another fight. You know, like even though it was a really short last minute replacement, he wasn't sure what he was tall, but yeah. The, <laughs> the, uh, the whole the whole process doesn't change. You know what I mean. As a professional fighter, you still got to do up your hands and out you go. Was there a reason why you were wrapping his hands and not Blair? No, no, no particular reason. You, you, you know, like I, I think I think at the time, Toby just asked if I would wrap his hands, and that's flavor of the month, I guess. <laughs> What's it like being in the change room backstage at Rebellion, seeing all the other trainers walking around? Was it did it feel like old times? Look, if the change room is my favourite place at a fight show. Mine if, too. If, if most people look back to evolution, like I, I put on two hundred and fifty, two hundred and sixty thousand dollar shows, and I spent most of the time out the back in the dressing room. <laughs> and and it, whenever I go to any show, I'm usually out the back because that's where the real action is. That's where it's you know, like other than the actual fighting in the yep. ring, everything else happens out the back. Well, I'll the, tell the people I have as much fun taking pictures and working backstage as I do at the main fights because the stuff backstage was where the magic happens. Most fans have never been backstage. So I'm just trying to show what happens backstage. It's a nice calm before the storm. You might get two people fighting that's chatting with each other. And yeah. For sure. With, with so much politics and that in, in any sport, 
there's yeah. always people that, that you, you know one guy mouths off and says oh yeah i don't like that guy then you see him licking their ass in front of everyone <laughs> i find that hilarious that's probably one of my one of my biggest things I like in the dressing room. Everyone talks a big game outside, but when they see each other, they're all licking each other's ass and being mates. It's usually a small yeah. room too. There's not much. There's not much to hide. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And at size events at Rebellion, the rooms are were really good. Like, like uh, the dressing room, it's not crammed. It's not too tiny. It's you know just right. Mean? Yeah. Now, even though Yakub was a last-minute replacement, it was still a very a nice five-round fight, going strong from first to the last round. What kind of advice were you giving to Toby during the fights? I, to, to be honest, like a lot of people ask, like, what, what do you say? What do you do? But in, in the end of the day, a lot of these guys, guys like Toby, Roy Wills, back, back maybe earlier as a trainer, I gave a lot more advice. Yeah, but now, man, these kids are these kids have grown up in the sport. They know what they're doing. Just if you see them go, going off the rail a little bit to the side, you have to say, "Hey, you're walking into this, or you, you, you know, like you're open for this." But other than that, they're doing their own thing. You know, unless they start to lose, this is my opinion as a trainer. Unless the boy starts losing, there's not much you have to tell him. Yeah, you've already you've already done it in the gym. You know what I mean? We like like. You've spent weeks training for the fight, then it's time to apply it and put it together. I remember you had a big role in this in this fight camp. You were pretty much doing pads every day. What do you you remember from this fight and how it went? Uh, I, I think this this was probably the first big fight I helped Blair and Toby with. Yeah, and I think I think there was a lot going on, especially like like we say with the late replacement and that and that guy being so giant, but. At the end of the day, you, you it, it's it's Toby that has to do the work, and it's it's years of Blair training him. So yeah. I think I'm with Toby. I think I'm more of a psychological coach, yeah, than like a mental coach. Even though I love holding pads for him, and I'm pretty sure he likes doing pads with me, I think I'm more on the mind and the mental side of it than than the actual physical man. Toby's an alpha male. He, he, everything he does, he does a hundred percent full on. So whether it's in and out of, in the ring or out of the ring, like he, he, he really strives to do it at the best. Yeah. I noticed during the corner, you were observing the other corner as well and watching his opponent. What kind of things do you look out for during a fight when you're watching the other person in the ring? I, I know I'm a bit odd. Sometimes people probably think, what's that guy looking at? But <laughs> I, I see these trainers and they, they get in the ring and they, they, they want to make the show all about them. But I, I, I'm total the reverse. I'm actually quite a recluse in my private life. I don't like a lot of attention. Yeah. And even though a lot of people say I, I thrive on it, I, I, I see, I look over to the other corner and I, I'm looking to see if his corner men are panicking. I look to see- What kind of signs boy, do you look for? You know, if, 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 all right, the easiest one I learned this back in the day, if, yeah. if someone's putting ice on your leg all the time, yeah, they're getting a sore leg from leg kicks. It's not, not hard to, to put that one down. But like, especially when people get cut, I can always, I, I believe that you can tell a good corner team when someone gets cut, because when they get cut, there's panic. Everybody, you've only got a minute to stop the blood. And people are pulling out those things, I don't know, those long sticks that you see in the boxing. Yeah. They're putting, uh, they're cracking the glass thing with the, I don't know what it's, the adrenaline. Man, I'll stop bleeding with a cold towel. You, you, <laughs> you, in that moment when something happens like that, you, you can tell a good corner because... When people start panicking and then the corner men start arguing because someone forgot the Vaseline or someone did this. I've seen that many, many times. Yeah, that's, that's when you see a good team and a good corner. Uh, what were some of the signs that you saw at this particular fight? Oh, look, when I looked over, I was more out of interest because okay. the, the, most ties are the same in the corner when they're, they're always going to yell out, you know, jump around like little monkeys. I, I don't know. But... Yeah. but I was more watching your cool, like how he was, he was like whether he was breathing heavy, whether, whether he was looking around in the crowd where it wasn't phasing him, whether he kept looking over. And most of the time, he, he was either listening to his trainer or looking over at Toby. So 
yeah, he, he yeah, look, he, he man, that was a that was a war that fight for both of them. Yeah, and I think he came over of no corner as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, I think one of I think one of Sai's guys might have done his corner. Yeah, it was a Thai super team. The yeah. Thais around yeah. Melbourne just jumped in and helped yeah. out. Yeah, and lastly, back to. The seminar at Hammers Gym. I gotta say, you run one of the best cl- uh, seminars that I've been to. I've been to seminars where the person giving the seminar would just be doing jab, cross, kick for the entire half hour. And for people paying for seminars, I don't think they might be getting the money's worth because they could learn that elsewhere. What you bring to a seminar, I feel you have the perfect amount of information for the pro guys and also the beginners. What is it like for you to run these kind of seminars? Yeah, I, I, I like running seminars. I I feel that it, it's it actually challenges me because I meet different people, and maybe maybe they're not going to gel, or maybe they're not going to understand where where that the angle or the aspect I'm come from. But I think the when we go back to the beginning of the interview, like I started martial arts at thirteen. I was teaching karate at 16 years old. You know what I mean? Like, like helping out as an assistant instructor and stuff. So as far as that goes, like, like the teaching, oh, I can do it quite good. But I think it, it's also that I've been in different countries. I've taught in, like, when I look at what I've done in my life, I have yeah. a bit of a giggle to myself. Like, I, like I've taught in Germany. I've taught all through Europe. I've taught seminars everywhere. I've, I've taught in Asia, man, a, a white guy teaching martial yeah. arts in Asia. What, what's that? So I, I think everything I bring to a seminar is from my life experience in the sport. Yeah. And yeah, I, I think I, I, I like it. I enjoy it. And I think it, it gives me pleasure, I guess, when I see people happy at the end of the seminar and I can see they're pumped up and they're excited. You know, it, it yeah. might be just a little, it might be the littlest thing like tapping a hand and punching or, you know, deflecting something that like there's so many things that, that you don't realize, you know, until you're stuck in front of 50 people teaching. It comes down to what you said earlier. You're a martial artist. Like you said, you started off in karate and you're still right now learning a new martial, a new discipline and wrestling and grappling. You're constantly involving. You're a martial artist. You think you have the core concepts of a martial artist and you're always adapting and working with people. Yeah, I, th- I think I think just just the fight game in general has helped me like live a better life. If I if I didn't if I wasn't fighting, who knows? I could end up in jail anyway. You know, you don't know where you're going to end up. But yeah. through fighting, it's kept me on the right track. And I, I try to I try to remind a lot of people that as well. You know, like in younger fighters. How important do you think it is to instill the martial artist aspects into people? Because I I'm sure you've seen a lot of fighters after fighting Muay Thai, you know, they've got no fights lined up. They just drop off. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, I think it's important. And like, like I'm looking at this picture and I'm looking at Hammer standing there. <laughs> look, look at Hammer, Hammer's 60 flat out. No, no, he's, he's, he's 50 something. Like 50, 50 54, man. <laughs> but he's probably about 80, but no, look at him. He never, he never stops learning. He's always like, me and him have been mates forever since the show, since the magazine. Yeah, like, like everything. But when I look at him in this photo, I can see Hammer. What like he's attentive. Yes, he's looking. He's looking and learning. And I guess that that's that's what makes him special as well, because he gets joy. Like man, you look at what he does for Melbourne, the fight scene. Like he brings all these people to his gym. Man, what what a lot of people don't realize is Hammer Hammer pays for it. Like. He, he uses his own money to teach people. There's not many trainers that would do that, man, that, that, that love it that much, that they, they just want to make sure their students get everything they can have. And also he's still so, jumping into the classes with the students. Yeah, he's, like, he's, like, he's crazy. He, he loves it. Like, like don't get me wrong. Like, I, I tried, look, I've tried, I think seven and a half years going through Asia and Europe. I, I trained everywhere. I've done, done lots of things, even in Brazil when I went there. But, like Hammer is like a little kid. Like he just loves it. Yes. You know? I don't know if you remember, I was actually in this seminar too. I was partnered up with Eric and I was doing the drills and during these kind of moments, I would get my camera and start shooting and start doing the seminar too because it was you know, such a immersive learning experience. 
And it's interesting how during the seminar, when I'm not training, you get to see it from a different angle as well. You get to learn from other people around you. Yeah. 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 But like, I suppose looking, looking through the lens, you see a total different angle on the whole room. Yes. And, and fight shows everything. Yeah. It was a great experience and I can't wait for more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's a pleasure having you on, Nugget. Thank you so much yeah. for the interview. No problem, brother. I'm happy I could help and I hope wish you all the success with this. I think it's a great concept and I think it's good for people to, to get to see, you know, like, like, I don't know, like when I look this, to me, it's old memory. So like, I, I appreciate it. Thanks very much. Thank you.